so hi everyone today we'll try to understand uh, codes for uh, implementing a vanilla gan architecture to train uh, over fashion mns data set so basically we will be using tensorflow for implementing the architecture for generator and decoder so let's get started uh, so the first thing is to import all the important libraries that we will require that majorly includes the tensorflow uh, and matplotlib for plotting and pandas the next step is to load the fashion mns data set so basically fashion mns data set i have re i'm reading from a csv file so this csv file has a 784 columns basically the image is a flattened array that i will be reshaping as you can see here after converting into a numpy array i am reshaping this into a uh, structure of 28 into 28 into 1 that is a 28 cross 28 one channel array, uh, image now if you look into some of the samples from the data set uh, the sample looks something like this so in fashion mns there are 10 classes basically or around different uh, fashion items like shoes coat t-shirts etc so you can see that here what is the sample data set uh, in the next step we will be doing certain pre-processing steps over the image so the pre-processing involves uh, casting the image values into float values and then dividing the values of 255 to make all the pixel values within the range of 0 to 1 uh, basically when you are making any image classifier also or like while using any GAN architecture you try to make the pixel values between 0 to 1 so that you can in the end of the day use either 10h or sigmoid uh, activation in your architecture though you can go with uh, 250 uh, like uh, from 0 to 255 range as well uh, but it is uh, it is assumed to be better practice to convert these values now after that using the data set uh, api from tensorflow uh, so i would be converting this training data set that i have read that has been reshaped as you can see here into a tensorflow object now uh, this is would be a tensorflow data set that i'm converting it into using from tensorflow slices so basically uh, this is just the images so as you can see that we haven't considered any labels for now this is because in gan architecture you don't even require labels for the vanilla gans at least so we're just providing it the image we will be training over the image data set and eventually you'll see how gan performs over this particular distribution so next step is to uh, map this particular uh, tensorflow data set that we have prepared uh, using a map function to the pre-processing function so pre-processing we are doing nothing but just the conversion of the images as float values and range and scaling the values from a range of 0 to 1 so using data set dot map function we will be doing that then we have a few things that we would be doing uh, uh, around the data set so we will be repeating the data set thrice like replicating the whole data set we will be shuffling the data set uh, then we will be creating batches of 128 and then we will be using a prefetch so prefetch is like basically having one batch of data set in advance with yourself so reduce latency so basically all this is getting done in this particular code snippet data set dot repeat dot shuffle dot batch dot prefetch so that is why i'm converting this uh, image data set into a tensorflow data set from tensor uh, slices reason because i can do many operations on this in just single line of code that is why else you can move it straight away um, values as well now there are a few parameters that we have declared for both discriminator and generator basically the input shape the final encoder dimension the encoder is basically discriminator so in this whole vlog don't get confused with encoder decoder discriminator and a generator so basically a generator is to a decoder and a discriminator is to an encoder just remember this uh, we are setting up a kernel size activation function dropout decoder input box etc all are these hyperparameters now let's understand a discriminator architecture that you're trying to uh, that we will be trying to train so discriminator architecture takes in an image shape as an input shape and then it makes a basic shallow cl uh, CNN classifier using uh, convolution, using convolution layer. So you can see that I've been adding multiple layers or multiple batches of uh, convolution 2D layer, then batch normalization, then doing an activation using ReLU and then a slight dropout using 0.1 as a factor. Once I'm uh, repeating this particular code block for multiple depths, like the depth is, I guess is five. So five times, this particular co uh, network would be repeated after that we will be flattening the output and using the dense layer we will be getting an output of dimension 2 uh, and this is how we will be making a discriminator the dimension is 2 because we are making a uh, either fake or real classification that is why next is we will be defining the generator architecture so generator architecture is basically following the decoder approach so the previous and by discriminator was an encoder approach now this is a decoder approach so in a decoder what we do we take a latent space and then we try to expand that latent space into an image so we'll be doing the same thing so here we have an input lay, uh, input layer that takes the input shape so this input would be a particular noise vector it would be nothing it would be a noise vector uh, then we'll be applying a dense value and then a reshape into an image so basically what we're trying to do here is we are taking a random noise vector 
uh, and then reshaping the noise vector as an image and now using con 2d transpose so con 2d transpose is basically used for so uh, in if you remember like the difference between con 2d and con 2d transpose is con 2d helps us in down sampling the image if you are using some kernels uh, like uh, getting different filters over the image well, down sampling is one of the byproducts that we may get in case of con 2d transpose we are trying to upsample the image intelligently so similar to discriminator we are, again will be repeating this network snippet code uh, con 2d batch normalization activation dropout five times after this is done we will be again uh, getting a con 2d transpose layer with a uh, with a kernel size equals to one and filter equals to one so that we can convert the whole image that we have formed here using the noise vector into a single channel image this is how the generator is created so I'm just telling you how 2D transpose is required because we wish to upsample the noise vector into a meaningful image. That is why we are using con 2D trans uh, 2D transpose layer. Now here we are mentioning the loss function. The loss function is called, uh, sparse categorical cross entropy. Uh, and apart from that, we are um, also mentioning the optimizers for the two networks, that is encoder and decoder. So again, remember that encoder is discriminator and decoder is uh, the generator because I just remember this that encoder uh, encodes uh, a big uh, a high dimensional image into a low into a low dimensional latent vector so what discriminator is doing it takes an image and converts it into a two, uh, finally getting a single output and the, what decoder is doing that is the generator it takes a random noise vector and expanding that noise vector into a full length image so that is a decoder part so if you know about basics of encode, uh, auto encoders if you don't know it do go and visit my previous video. Also, I guess you should go and visit my previous video on GANs also to understand how the architecture of a GAN is implemented and it's worked. Now, next, uh, we are moving on to batch training. So, how batch training would be done? Uh, so, basically, how training this is uh, where like we have defined all the architectures that are required. Now, what we will be doing is uh, we will see how we can train this. So, basically, what we are doing here, we would be first of all, uh, we would be getting a mix of real and fake samples. So the real samples would be coming from the data set that we loaded from Fashion MNIST data set, if you remember. And fake images would be generated using the generator. Now, uh, using some random noise as an input. Now we would be mixing all these uh, and then we will be feeding a discriminator to classify between real and fake images. And depending upon the discriminator's performance, we will be optimizing all the loss function, right? Uh, that we have declared as sparse categorical loss. So here what we are doing is that we are first of all generating real labels that is uh, all values equals to one then we're generating some fake labels that are all values equals to zero now we are also generating a batch of noise vectors so noise vectors would be basically that we would be feeding into a generator now using tf dot gradient tape for both back propagation for both uh, encoder and decoder we would be using tf dot gradient tape now we would be first generating uh, fake images using the decoder the decoder is basically nothing but a generator similarly Using the encoder, I would be generating uh, labels for the fake images. So what? So we would be feeding this fake images to the uh, discriminator, and we will be fetching the labels that the discriminator is giving for that. Similarly, we will be also fetching the labels that the discriminator is giving for the real images. Also, the training data set here you can see. Now we will be concatenating both the results. Previous step we have already concatenated the actual labels that we are expecting, and here are the predictions made by the discriminator for the same samples. Now we will be calculating the discriminator's loss. Uh, and generators loss so uh, once this is done so uh, for discriminator loss it would be over the whole data set that is uh, a mix of 0 and 1 that we have uh, that we have merged together but in case of generator loss it would be over only the fake images that the developed so basically uh, generator loss would be nothing but uh, we uh, the generator would be expecting uh, output 1 for all the images that it has generated so now real labels means that uh, we are assuming the labels to be 1 and fake labels 2 means that these are the output given a discriminator for the fake images. So basically, uh, ideally, all the fake labels too should be one because uh, the generator, uh, the, uh, the generator is preparing these images and wish the discriminator to believe that these images are true. And that is why the loss function would be calculated between real labels that is all ones and fake labels. So what is uh, given by the discriminator for the generated images? Now using decoder underscore gt that we have declared here only with tf dot gradient tape as you can see here dot gradient. We will be back propagating for, uh, we will be calculating gradients for both decoder and encoder architecture and then applying these gradients for training of the decoder and encoder architecture. Now, uh, here is a function that defines the epoch training. So, it was a bas uh, it was the above uh, uh, function was for batch training. Uh, so, in an epoch, we will be having multiple batches. So, how we are calculating that? So, we are first of all calculating over the total number of steps we have in a particular epoch. 
so I assume that we have a uh, uh, total images of 1000 and the uh, batch size is 128 so steps per epoch would be 1000 divided by 120 it lumps some around that so the, uh, we would be calling the batch training function over the data iterator so data iterator is nothing but uh, a generator function uh, generator function generator function basically means something that is iterable uh, so right uh, so we will be uh, iterating over one batch at a time from the data uh, from the data iterator and calculating the uh, discriminator loss and generator loss as you're calculating your returning right now we will be, uh, for the whole epoch we will be calculating the average generator loss and discriminator loss and then we would be saving <coughs> the generator loss and discriminator loss using a tf dot summary dot scalar not required but if you wish to do it you can do it uh and then we will be uh, resetting the state and then returning uh, the, uh, the generator and discriminator loss now here comes the function for complete training so here basically we are mentioning all the checkpoints uh, related idea so uh, while training we wish to save uh, the generator model from time to time so because gen uh, training again architecture takes time so we would be setting some checkpoints related uh, code snippet here uh, basically this is the major part tf.train.checkpoint where we are uh, saving both decode, uh, decoder optimizer, encoder optimizer, and decoder architecture and, and encoder architecture. So four things we are saving in the checkpoint part. And using the checkpoint manager, we are saving all these models, uh, all these uh, values and the models in the uh, in the location training checkpoints. And here, as you can see here, the uh, we are iterating over the epochs, total number of epochs we wish to uh, we wish to run over. We should train the model on. Uh, we are calling. The summary object summary object is basically helping us writing all the logs that we have we are calculating the generator loss and discriminator loss and then printing that generator loss and discriminator loss so basically nothing there so the most important function of all uh, is the bash training part where we are training using the uh, apply gradients and calculate gradients functions we are trying uh, we are trying to uh, back propagate in a decoder and encoder architecture and train them and basically all the rest of the functions epoch training and complete training are basically coding norms that i'm trying to follow so that uh, the code remains very clear to everyone that what is batch training how epoch training incorporates batch training and how complete training incorporates epoch training now once this is done we would be calling the complete training function over the data set and number of total number of epochs once the training is done we'll be generating some random noise vectors and then uh, we're calling the decoder architecture again the decoder architecture refers to the generator and generating certain image size you can see that i have trained over uh, for uh, not for very long but still the results are pretty good if you can train the uh, GAN architecture for a very long time uh, and if you have good res uh, hardware resources then the results could improve a lot